we want to take the time to talk about the various injector features we want to look at. We want to use scan data and our scan tool to test this injector. To do that, we're going to look at certain areas. And one of the first areas we're going to talk about is we have to take it out. We've talked about this before. You don't need any special tools. You simply loosen the hold down bracket and remove it from the bore. But let's stop here and talk about this for a minute. If when you reinstall it, that copper wash at the bottom is worn or distorted or has any contamination, it will not make a good seal because that's going to seal the combustion chamber. If you don't tighten the hold down clamp or the bolt properly, you're not going to have sufficient torque to seal up the combustion chamber. And we're going to have a combustion chamber leak. But that's not the only leak. Let's talk about the different things that can leak here. If we have something going wrong, we're going to have excessive smoke, rough running, low power, stalling, misfire, bucking and jerking. And we're going to talk about ways to find some of this with our scan data. But if the O-ring leak fuel, they're going to dilute the oil. And we can check that by injecting air pressure at the filler, at the filler pipe coming out of the uh, secondary fuel filter. Or we can inject dye and see if we get dye leaking out of here. If we can put dye in, the, in there and we, get, we pressurize it and we get leaks, we'll be able to go and take the valve cover off, use a UV light, and identify the dye. You can check that very simply. That's not hard to do. And we find a number of them that look pretty bad. But that's not the only type of leak we can have. They can also allow pressure from the cylinder in the combustion chamber flow backwards into the secondary fuel filter assembly. It causes the same list of problems we just saw before. But remember, this is also going to mean it's going to damage our check valve. For it to get back out of our deadhead system, the pressure has to damage the check valve we showed you before we bolt on into the uh, cylinder head. Combustion pressure can easily do that. But let's see how we can do that. We're going to move the secondary fuel filter, and then we're going to turn the ignition on to fill the bowl. We're going to disable the fuel pump so it won't run anymore, and we're going to be testing strictly the engine. And we're going to crank the engine and look for air coming out of the standpipe. We usually figure it takes about 30 seconds. Crank long enough to see it coming back out. It has to build up, overcome the O-rings, overcome the whatever resistance is left in the check valve. Now, if we have bubbles, could it be that the injector was not torqued correctly when we put the mounting bracket back on there? Or do we have a, a ceiling washer that was worn out, distorted, or had uh, some type of contamination on it to prevent it from sealing the combustion chamber? All these things have happened before to people. Let's see what the bubbles look like. This is typical of bubbles coming back. Now, it could be a head gasket. That's possible, too. We've seen head gaskets, and we've seen... Uh, injectors. So you have to kind of do some testing here. If it's a head gasket, we can do some relative compression testing and see if that's possibly the thing. We can also do power contribution and see if there's one cylinder with lower power contribution. These are all tests we're going to be using with our scan data later on. So what we should be seeing is something like this. We should sit crank, but we should see no bubbles coming back. That means we've got a good seal. Now you notice we are well above the stop of the standpipe which is where our fuel is going to be going out and going to the cylinder head. So this particular cylinder passes. The next thing we're going to look at is scan data and how can we see various things going wrong with scan data.